We've calculated the force on a straight piece of wire. That wasn't so bad, I L cross B. We've calculated the force on a curvy wire. Well, we can write the equation for it, but it's nasty vector calculus, so we may not do too curvy of a wire. So let's do one that we can do, where the vector calculus won't be so bad. Let's calculate the magnetic force on a, um, on a square, square current loop. Okay, keeping up with all these vectors, all these directions, the cross product, you gotta be fairly careful. Let's go ahead and define a, uh, a coordinate system. So let's have x that way, let's have y up, and let's have z out. X cross Y is Z, so it is a right-handed coordinate system. Let's have a magnetic field pointing in the X direction. So uniform B field pointing this way. Okay. And we're actually not going to do a square. Let's do a rectangle. Let's let it have different sides. Rectangular. Just to prove that what we're going to result, our result will not be dependent on it being a square. And now let's draw our current loop like this. Kind of trying to draw it thick. Too thick. Like that. And since it's a rectangle, this side will be A, have a length A. And this side will have a length B. So a nice little rectangle. And current is going to go around this way. Current is flowing counterclockwise in this rectangle. OK, so here we go. Magnetic force on a current loop. In this case, a nice geometrical current loop. Well, we know that FB is IL cross B. And we know that if it's not a straight line, we have to do an integral that it's equal to the integral. And in this case, we're doing a line integral around the loop. So it's actually a closed contour integral. We could put a loop on it like that. But it's still I ds cross b. So we can't do this. We have to do this. However, notice that we have made four straight sides. So what we're really going to do, as we've done in the past on other kinds of problems, is break this up into four integrals, one for each straight side. Okay, so let's go ahead and number them. One, two, three, and four. Four straight sides. And now let's calculate, let's uh, break into four sides. And let's calculate the force on each one, and then we just have to add it up to get the total force. Okay, so side one. What is the force going to be? So in this case, this is side one. ds is basically this length vector going along here. If you add it all up the ds's, it's just this length b, a vector of magnitude b pointing that way. So we know the force is this vector pointing this way crossed with a b field pointing that way. So it's a cross product of two anti-parallel vectors. The cross product is zero. If you want to do it with trig, You'd say it's the magnitude of the length times the magnitude of the B field times the current sine theta. Theta between these two vectors is 180 degrees. Sine of 180 degrees is zero. So basically, since um, L cross B equals zero, F1 equals zero. By L, I mean for the whole side. Okay. So no force on this segment. Good. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, two. Segment two. In segment two, the add up, if you add up all the ds's, or you just think of it as an L, it's a vector of magnitude A pointing down. Okay. And the B field is to the right. So those are perpendicular. That will give you a cross product. 90 degrees. The sine of 90 is 1. So in this case, the force, so here we have that L is perpendicular to B. So this time the force is not going to be zero. It's going to be I times 
the L magnitude, the L magnitude is just A, the length of the vector, A, uh, times B, times the sine of the angle between them, well, sine of 90 is 1. And um, what is the direction? Well, we've got to do the right-hand rule. So if we had L cross B, or all the DSs cross B, it would be, uh, oh, I didn't practice this one ahead of time. Let's see, it would be down along there, curled towards B, it would be out. So it'd be positive z direction, so it's in the k hat direction. All right. So there is F2, IAB in the k hat direction. So this one actually feels a little force pulling it out. All right. F3. For F3, we have the DSs add up for a length vector going this way, the same direction as the B field. So L cross B is 0 because they are parallel. So F3 is 0. OK. Almost done. 4. F4. Let's see. Now again, we have something perpendicular to B. That's good. So it is L. I'll add up all the DSs. basically becomes the vector of magnitude A pointing up. So we know then that uh, L and B are perpendicular to each other. So we are going to have a cross product. That's good. So F4 equals what? I. Well, they all have the same I. And it's this side, so it's A. And it's a uniform B, thank goodness. I, A, B. And now in what direction? Uh, let's see. A cross B is in. So on this one, force 4, this was force 2, force 4 is in. Well, in means in the negative Z direction. So put a negative sign there, K hat. So there we have all of our forces. And if we want the total force on the loop, it's equal to 0 plus 0 is 0 plus Oh my gosh, those are the opposite. IAB minus IAB, so it's zero. So if you have a current loop in a uniform magnetic field, we get no force.